I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, and this is Sarek joining me this evening to tell you that in a recent video collaboration with Liam Sinclair of Reptiles and Research, I discuss neuroplasticity and how environment impacts the brain, either enhancing or diminishing cognitive abilities, learning, resiliency, adaptability, and coping. At the end of the video, I mentioned this. In conclusion, optimal welfare for snakes under captive management includes providing them with as many options as possible, giving them opportunities to exercise their minds and bodies, and allowing them choice and control over their own behavior. Providing complex environments or access to enrichment areas with appropriate challenges and opportunities for the snakes to have agency and make decisions about what activities to engage in and when will foster learning, build resiliency, and strengthen coping abilities. This is the case even if the snake is exposed to environmental complexity and cognitive stimulation for even short periods of time on a regular basis. Yes, you heard me correctly. Any amount of access to environmental complexity, enrichment, mental stimulation, and physical exercise makes a difference in neuroplasticity, overall fitness, and optimal welfare for snakes. Exposure to these activities for even short periods of time benefits the animal. If you haven't seen the videos I'm referring to yet, you can find them here, and I will also put a link to them in the description for this video. I wanted to do follow-up videos in this series, emphasizing that you can still provide your snakes with enrichment and stimulation, even if you don't have the space or the inclination to house them in full-size enclosures or large habitats. It is possible to provide environmental complexity, enrichment, physical exercise, and mental stimulation outside of your snake's normal living space with designated shared common areas, exercise stations, giving them training opportunities, and other supervised activities. I've mentioned this in other videos about enrichment, but just as a reminder, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums recognizes five enrichment categories. Those are cognitive, dietary, physical, sensory, and social. Now, outside of the zoo community, guidelines for enrichment in other organizations, such as animal shelters, are very similar and include cognitive feeding, physical exercise, novel experiences, and sensory stimulation as forms of enrichment. Note that earlier, I pointed out the importance of giving snakes opportunities to engage their minds and bodies, access to enrichment areas, and that it benefits the snake to have exposure to complex environments and mental stimulation for even short periods of time on a regular basis. Science supports this. Here's an example from a 2021 paper by T.R. Zentel. Animal's ability to learn both simple and complex tasks is affected by even modest time spent in an enriched environment. If you don't have space for dedicated activity areas for your snakes, don't worry. You can still provide stimulation within smaller enclosures or even in tubs by introducing novel items, varied substrates, artificial plants, and one or more items the snake can crawl through, around, or climb on top of. Remember, any amount of stimulation that has positive emotional valence that the snake is not afraid of or distressed by is beneficial. Everyone, thank you so much for watching and for caring about snake welfare. To learn more about how to provide enrichment for snakes not housed 24-7 in large, complex habitats, head over to Green Room Pythons where Bob Bledsoe will elaborate, show you examples, and give you several options for consideration in his video, which you can find right here. And until next time, always remember to be kind and love your animals.